How much vitamin K2 am I taking? I take 90 micrograms a day in addition to eating foods that may have some vitamin K2. I'll explain why and I'll put the link to the one that I particularly take down in the description. If you want to look at that, that's fine. There's an Amazon link. I'm an Amazon affiliate, but you could do you. You do whatever you want. You could take whatever product you want. It doesn't matter as long as you're getting enough vitamin K. And in this video, I'm going to explain why. There's this paradoxical problem when we get to be over the age of 50 and that is that we start to become a little bit more frail the bone starts to become a little bit less strong for some people it's a lot and we start to deposit calcium in our arteries and this is a major problem it's paradoxical in a way that we start to lose calcium in our bones but we start to have too much calcium in our blood vessels and as we get older because of osteoporosis we all want to protect our bones there's a lot of people that are taking calcium supplements and vitamin d3 supplements and this may be good for our bones but is it there's a quite a bit of research to show that actually calcium supplementation and vitamin d3 while it's supposed to be good for our bones may be increasing our cardiovascular risk and depositing this calcium in our smooth muscles of our arteries rather than the bones. And there's a reason why is because we need vitamin K to transport the calcium from our blood vessels into our bones to be to make our bones stronger. The problem is for a lot of Western diets we're not getting enough uh, vitamin K2. Now where can you get vitamin K2 from in our diet naturally? A lot of fermented foods because bacteria are the ones that are important for the development of vitamin K2. So things like there's uh, NATO, which is like a Japanese soybean, fermented soybean. There's sauerkraut, which, listen, I live in California and I did not grow up eating these foods. When I've tried these foods, bleh, I mean, I cannot stomach them. So another way that you can get uh, K2 is through certain cheeses like Gouda and various hard cheeses of which for me personally, ech, I can't really take because I just don't like the taste. And no matter how healthy these foods are, I just can't eat them. They're, to me, they're just disgusting, but you may like them. So like I said in the beginning, you do you. If you can eat them, you're getting a lot of vitamin K. But this is the reason why supplementation is so important is because if you're not eating the foods that actually have vitamin K2, then you're just not getting any. And as you get older, the calcium is going to sit in your bloodstream, form calcium deposits and increase your risk for a cardiovascular disease. It'll increase the stiffness of the arteries, raising your blood pressure. So K2 is very, very important. Now there are a number of studies to support, and I'll put the links down in the description for you if you want to read them further, of how they found that calcium supplementation actually increases cardiovascular risk and supplementation with vitamin K2 removes calcium deposits from our arteries and deposits this calcium into our bones. So I'll put those studies down in the links. I'll put the links down in the description. That's what I was trying to say. And this may explain why certain places, for example, Japan and the Mediterranean areas have less cardiovascular problems than Western societies. And the reason why is because the foods that they eat probably are rich in vitamin K2. As a California boy, how can we also get K2 in our diet? And that is to eat farm-raised foods. So if you're gonna get eggs, get farm fresh eggs from chickens that actually ate from the ground rather than grain-fed types of foods. Chicken breast, for example, has quite a bit of K2 in it. Not as much as like uh, the Japanese soybean stuff or sauerkraut, but it does have K2. So if you get grass-fed animals, if you eat like chicken breast, supposedly chicken liver has a lot of K2, uh, egg yolk has a lot of K2. So I personally eat uh, about 60 to 90 eggs 
per month. So if they are grass fed from grass fed uh, chickens and stuff like that, then I know I'm getting enough vitamin two. But again, I feel as though as in the, in the Western societies that supplementation with K2 would be a good idea. And like I said, I will put a link down below in the description to let you know what I take. I take one tablet, 90 micrograms, and that's from the research perspective uh, that you can read. That's more than enough for you. That's what I do.